So uh, thank you everyone for taking the time to join. So on our on the previous dev retrospective that we we conducted, we kind of ran through top gooders history. I'm going to give it an abbreviated version of that. Um, if in the event this is your first time joining the the dev retrospective, so top gooders started in in 2001. Our founder uh, Jack Hughes, uh, his son used to play chess. So he would attend these tournaments and he was interested in how chess players were ranked. And he had this idea that if you could rank software developers, what were the possibilities that can kind of stem from that? If you could identify the best software developers in the world and then offer them opportunities to, to earn money. Um, so, Topcutter was born in 2001, and our website definitely shows it. You can see it's very old school. Back in the day, this is cutting edge. And then fast forward to 2020, 19 years later, and we're at 1.5 million members, and we have a very modern, clean, and snappy design. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you about a couple different case studies ranging from web applications to mobile apps, algorithm development to quality insurance. Uh, and the folks who ran this work, executed these challenges on the platform, are here to talk about these projects today. We want this to be as interactive as possible, so please feel free to post any questions that you may have. We'll take pauses, we'll answer those questions. We want this to make, we want this to be collaborative. So without much further ado, let's look, go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with ABB. Uh, ABB had an application called Rise. And Lalji, one of our project managers, he ran this project. If you're familiar with Talent as a Service or what we're calling gig work now, this project was our very first massive talent as a service project. So let's go ahead and get started, Lalji. Yeah, okay, thank you, Rashid. So hello everyone. So yeah, as Rashid said, uh, I think nowadays everyone is familiar of what is TAS. Like uh, this was the first project when we started uh, TAS as a like new kind of like, model, where we uh, like, if you if your clients don't have the uh, scope of the project at once and if they don't have the requirements or anything like at once and so they used to ask us okay um, can you provide us the pool of developers for this period of time so this was the first project and uh, like when we had first like okay when we won this deal like this was supposed to uh, run for only 14 weeks but uh, later like we the quality of uh, deliverables from our side and like okay the developers like used to work for like more than 40 hours per week and uh, like we proceed okay uh, we need your help on this development phase for more than 14 weeks so like we this project we started in november and we finished uh, like last week last to last week first of june and now also we are in a plan to get new CR change request for like there are like few more functionalities, additional requirements. So they are asking us to uh, like, uh, asking our help to uh, fix those additional requirements. And okay, we said okay, we'll we'll do that. But yeah, again, we will go with the like different kind of pool. It's not that okay, we'll have always same developers working on the uh, this ABV project. So. It's already started like it's more than six months. This was the first project and uh, like now like we finished, but we are in a process to get new CR. So yeah, Rashid, can you go ahead? Next slide, please. Okay, so this project, I will uh, let you know about this highlight of this project. Okay, this project is all about the electric equipments and substation. So ABB is operating uh, substations. So they want uh, like this application will tell you, the, uh, tell them that, okay, the condition of the substations each and every substation suppose if you if they like if you have a circuit breaker in your substation like what is the condition of the substation whether you want to replace and at which time you want to replace 
so they want all the calculations so this is like this application is like have lot of calculations and uh, like the electrical knowledge also was required in this project so a little bit like it's not that okay it was not that straightforward so like at the end okay initial phase was very difficult to understand because as you can see here like this is the rise 2.0 this is the upgradation of the old application so whenever we used to work on any functionality like we didn't get any requirement uh, in document okay they used to tell us that okay this is the functionality and it should work as per the old application and we can't like this uh, there, there was one like back uh, backdrop back, backdrop of this project was okay because of the f old application we used to like we did lot of mining code mining we deep dive into that old application and we figure out that logic behind each functionality like, like how we are getting these calculations all these things so initial phase was very difficult but later okay once we get in like once we knew that okay logic behind this and like how this electric equipments are working all this then like it, it was fun to work on this project later but yeah initial phase was difficult and in terms of uh, the developers we provided five developers four developers plus one co-pilot and uh, like from start of the project till like like uh, like last week we had around uh, 1200 tickets in github so like each uh, ticket was like okay consist like around like okay five to six hours of like to complete each ticket developer was spending like five to six hours you can like get the idea like how much effort we put on this functionality so this was the like whole overview so in terms of uh, like final result as we said as i said like okay the initial deal was only for 14 weeks but later we changed we got the uh, estimate like extension in timelines as well as budget so we got we ended up getting seven new change requests so yeah that was the one and like okay our developer were like they were fully occupied on this project only working on this rise 2.0 project and uh, like working more than 40 hours per week like sometimes we worked on weekend as well but yeah that was the high level overview of this project yeah rashid can you go ahead okay so this is the core of the project where like on right side you can see this uh, the equipment list so we had around like 60 equipments different kind of equipments each equipment ha like are having different kind of properties so like it, it was not easy like and we made this application as a like okay it, it is not that hard like we never uh, like we never use the any hard coding here in this application so whenever it is possible we try to like make it as uh, reactive as possible so uh, this is the core of the application where like, all the calculations are happening in this part so like uh, this is the like whatever the diagram you will create here that diagram is considered like they are calling as a substation of that. So yeah, next uh, screen. So uh, these are the properties for uh, each of the equipments. There will be like the uh, like different kind of tabs, and in each tabs there are different properties. All properties are like we are using all the properties to get the final calculations. So it like and we it it's not that okay. All the uh, equipments have the same logic few equipments are having different logic few equipments so it was not uh, straightforward to get the final calculations and uh, the problem was uh, the logic was in uh, old application and if something is not working then like we spend a lot of time in mine code mining and debugging the issues if something is not working so yeah that's uh, the core of this application so we ran for more than 6 months so this was the first task deal and we success completed and uh, client was very happy with the outcome of this project uh, now also they are saying that okay they have few more applications related to that they want excel application to be moved into desktop applications so they said okay maybe there will be like few more coming ups so yeah so lalji this was our first major talent as a service slash gig work project what would you say 
the coolest thing you experienced during this project was? Yeah, the coolest thing is like, okay, like it was not the, the problem was like, uh, not problem, like it was like the uh, coolest thing was uh, the requirement, uh, it, it is an agile project, it, it is an agile project, like whenever we used to get the requirements, we used to work with the client and uh, the uh, deadline issue. So whenever you launch the challenge, you will have the deadline, five, five days deadline, okay, this sprint kind of thing. But here we used to uh, deliver the functionalities on daily basis. So that was the like, okay, fun, like, okay, if something is not working, okay, we'll get the review from client at the end of day and next day we can fix that. So on daily basis, we used to deliver the functionalities. I think that's the best part because you, you, you don't feel that, okay, at the end of like, okay, the sprint time, you don't feel that, okay, oh, this is not working. You, we, uh, we spent one week, but at the end of week, we are not getting the expected output. Here, okay, today is not working. Tomorrow, we will get the time to fix that. So I think that's the best uh, part. Uh, in Agile project, you will have the interacting, interacting session with client every day and every day delivering functionalities. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Lalji. Uh, do you want to just talk about who your co-pilot was briefly and, and how they helped and yeah, any of the sure. members that worked on this? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the initial phase in the initial phase, uh, ghost star was a co-pilot for this project. Uh, he helped us, uh, in setting up this code and like all this, because like, in, initially we were like in assumption that, okay, this is the web application. We were working, uh, the previous application was web application, but client wanted this application to be desktop. So he helped us in getting the information, like from moving the web application into desktop application. And uh, like there, along with the desktop application, we also implemented the uh, application for tablet. So Windows tablet. So like, the, that for that, so it was the, like our assumption in initial phase, our assumption was, okay, it is the, uh, like, different kind of tablet application like okay you will install the application it was not that in tablet also they used a uh, browser to open the application in tablet so it was not that uh, straightforward application in tablet as well as uh, in desktop so he helped us uh, in like like the initial phase was the difficult phase so he was there to help us in all these cases and uh, uh, logging the tickets and discussing with the clients and later uh, we got that okay um, like i was more interacting with the client so later i worked with the developers closely but yeah initial phase ghostar uh, like i will take this opportunity to thank him so he helped you he help help me in initial phase like without his uh, help i don't think okay this project will, uh, will be like successful so awesome. in terms of uh, in terms of developers, uh, we had in initial phase, we had two de uh, front end developers and two back end developers. But uh, once we moved on to like, okay, once in like later phase, uh, mainly uh, Nightwolf and uh, Diaz, like these two developers helped me to uh, complete this project. They were like working for more than 10 hours, 12 hours on weekend as well. And uh, like we had uh, the data. Uh, like we top coder team uh, figure out that data how many hours they are working so I, like we got to know that okay they worked for 64 hours per week so that was the uh, effort they put in this project so i really like want to thank them for uh, helping me in this project hey, hey lalji there's a question uh, uh, on the yeah. chat how was the data shared with the task members yeah so as i said we use the github so I used to get the requirement from client and those requirements sometimes in document and sometimes in video recording, but uh, I never shared the video recording uh, information to the developers because uh, that, that, that way, like, okay, they, they will waste their time, their valuable time in uh, investigating the requirements. So I used to log the tickets in GitHub, like, okay, small, small tickets, uh, describe the, what the requirement in description and upload the expected result then what is the like if there are any bugs like what is the result now and what is the expected result so we use the github like for almost all 1200 bugs uh, we uh, 
like after getting this requirement we used to deploy the code in azure like the client is having client is having that azure environment so we use there and uh, we deployed in their vms so yeah and one more uh, point i want to highlight is like for few functionalities uh, when we tested the few functionalities were working in local machine but were not working in vm clients vm so we realized that okay uh the, the sometimes what happened like there was some issue with related to deployment sometimes the issue was related to browser all these things so we like uh learn lot of things uh during during this time and uh yeah we use uh, github only to transfer the information yeah anything else like got it lalji thank you so much for covering that yeah, yeah. and a hey, nice job lalji i know this thank was you. Not an easy project. I mean, you're a true trailblazer. Good star. He did an amazing job. All of the members that worked on this, client was so happy they kept coming back to us and extending the length of the project. So, fantastic job all around. Yeah, thank all you. Right. Everyone. Thanks, Alji. Let's keep it moving. Let's talk about Agnomi Telemedicine. Um, I'm going to do a quick intro, Kelly. So this project, top this project was a referral through one of our partners. Um, we had worked with this partner for a very long time at all of the various places that he worked. He brought TopCoder in. Um, he knew a uh, a sleep doctor in Buffalo who wanted to build a telemedicine health app. So did the introduction, worked with us to do the UI design, and the, the, the client loved it. And But they ended up going with someone else to do the actual development. That didn't go very well, so then they came back to us and were like, look, we're having problems with our current vendor. You guys did the design, can you also build this application for us? So we started looking through the code, and we're like, okay, we're gonna just throw everything out, start from scratch. Um, now, as you all know, Stepping into a project that's already in progress is always difficult, but making the decision to kind of just start over from scratch um, was a difficult one as well because work had already been done up to that point. When Kelly took on this project, it was a, it's a, it was a massive, massive application. There are a lot of requirements. There are a lot of different personas that are involved in facilitating telemedicine from the doctor to the patients and being able to submit your insurance. So a lot of work uh, and attention to detail and, and um, caring has gone into this application. So I'm really excited about this one. Uh, Kelly was the project manager. She's going to talk about it today. Uh, Wendell was a co-pilot. They did a fantastic job. Kelly, take it away. All right. So this is actually a suite of applications in that there is the mobile application that the patients use and then there's the web application that the, the physicians use to conduct the teleconsults. So the overall goal of this application was to be a complete tele-office experience. So that means that the patient registers and they get all the way through um, to the point of diagnosis and treatment. And so we had to consider registration, um, payment, insurance, documents, and not just the teleconsult like video piece. Um, but that's the way we started. We started with the teleconsult piece. We wanted to make sure that the uh, Zoom SDK worked with the uh, React Native um, because there's not a native SDK for React Native. Um, so we started on that and then we just kind of started iterating over all the other features that needed to be included in this suite. Uh, we started with the iOS version um, per the request of the doctor and we're actually working on getting the uh, Android version released to the App Store or the Play Store uh, this week. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna focus on the patient side um, since it's the mobile app side. Um, so, uh, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with HIPAA, it's the um, Healthcare Information Privacy and Something Else Act. Um, so patient information is 
has, has to be kept secure. Everything has to be encrypted. There's like a whole checklist of things that we have to do to make sure that the data is secure. So in, a, in addition to working from a patient per, first perspective, we had to work from a security first perspective. Um, so uploading documents, uploading payment information, uploading insurance information had to be all secure. So we had to work from that perspective as we were building out the functionality as well. Um, this one was a fun one for me, uh, mostly because Wendell, my co-pilot, ran it. Um, and I just asked all the stupid questions. And uh, our client knew what he wanted. Like he was you know, very demanding, but he also knew what he wanted. If I had a question about something, he gave me a straight answer and there was no going back and forth. It was just, do this. Great, I can do that. Um, so at this time, patients can register and upload their patient information and their insurance information and their payment information, and then have a teleconsult over a mobile phone um, with a doctor to decide if, whether or not they need a home sleep test to diagnose sleep apnea or other various uh, sleep disorders. So um, also kind of important is we did this during the COVID pandemic, um, which we are still living through right now. Um, so this was more, the original goal was just to be convenient for patients, um, but then this COVID thing popped off and then it became a safety issue for patients and doctors. Um, so we were able to get that deployed quickly. Uh, the doctor just shared with us that he had his 100th patient uh, this week, Monday, Monday or Friday. Um, so he's very pleased with that. Um, all right. And the product is live. We had one co-pilot, 33 unique participants, several, several, 13 submissions, or total submissions and three final submissions. Yeah. All right, we can go to the next screen. Here are some screen grabs. Um, so of course users can log in as a new patient or an existing patient. We have all of the uh, information on the user's dashboard. Nice clean designs. Um, we have the ability to join the appointment along with appointment times. Uh, the appointments also end up on the user's Google Calendar if they have a, a Gmail calendar. And um, they can change their address and user information. So All right, thank you very much, Kelly. Yeah, no <clears throat> and fantastic job to everyone that was involved, uh, Kelly, Wendell, and all of the awesome uh, winners of the challenges that were launched on the healthcare platform. Uh, next up, we're gonna have Sarab talk about um, RAND predictive analytics. This is a really cool and interesting problem. Uh, it was also run by Gosar, who, if uh, uh, if you may have noticed, what also worked on the the ABB project. Uh, Srab, take it away. Hey, thanks, Rashid. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, Rand Predictive Analytics. Uh, we ran this project for one of the largest telecom group in Europe and Ghost, I was the co-pilot for this project. So the objective of the project was to build an algorithm which can analyze the historical network data and which can help in predict six key performance indicators two hours in advance. Like if I want to know what is the physical resource for utilization or what are the average number of users for a tower at 10 a.m. I would run the algorithm at 8 a.m. and I would like to get the info uh, like what will be the average number of users at 10 a.m. So uh, this key performance indicators was basically uh, the resource block utilization for a particular tower, the average number of users, what will be the spectral efficiency, that is downlink spectral efficiency and uplink, uplink spectral efficiency. So we had three challenges in this project. We started with an ideation challenge. Client has provided us a huge data set with 20 million records. 
and around 256 different variables, including the target variables. So uh, we started with an ideation challenge. The objective of the ideation challenge was to identify the highly correlated uh, features or highly correlated variables and to define a training strategy as we have to make predictions two hours in advance. So what type of training strategy should we use and what type of models can we use that was the main objective of ideation. So we got around uh, nine submissions in ideation challenge. Uh, we identified highly correlated features or highly correlated variables. And we got a different type of uh, suggestions like what type of model can we use? Should we use neural network models? Should we use tree-based models? Or the suggestions were there. there. Uh, we can ensemble both neural network and tree based models. So we carry forward this idea. We launched our first Dave challenge and we got around seven submissions from that challenge. Uh, instead of good number of submissions, the accuracy was not good after the first challenge. And also the training time required was very high. So with that, uh, we launched our next challenge that was the third challenge focusing on the accuracy and the training time. And in the third challenge, uh, we got around 15 submissions on this. And after evaluating the submissions, we uh, got an accuracy of 70% for one of the KPI. And for other KPIs, it was in the range of 60 to 65%. And it was 46% for one of the KPIs. So after that, uh, we done some more evaluation on the scoring matrix which was used. So uh, we used mean absolute percentage error for this project uh, as the evaluation matrix for the model. So we found out that uh, that matrix becomes highly unstable when the predicted or the actual value approach is zero. And that's why uh, the accuracy value, which is 100 minus the mean absolute percentage error, that value is very low, that's getting low. So after that, we also evaluated the model predictions on uh, other evaluation metrics like the log correlation and the rank ordering correlation. And we found out that uh, the algorithm shows great capability in uh, correlating the predicted and the actual values and it's also very good in uh, rank ordering this predicted values. It shows uh, which value is higher than which and by how many times. So that was a good part. Uh, next slide, please. So here you can see in the table uh, that uh, the last row is 100 minus map. So that's the accuracy which we defined for this project. Uh, and you can see that it's 64, 46, 65, 58, 70. So they, this looks uh, quite low, like the 46 one was the uh, low value and client was not happy with that. But after evaluating on log correlation and uh, rank correlation, we can see that the, these values are uh, around 85% for all the KPIs except for KPI 6. And if you look at this 46% uh, value, 100 minus map 46%, uh, the log correlation value is 81% for this KPI. And this happened because uh, the data or the value of the data for this KPI was varying largely. It was uh, varying by 377 times. So that's why it was getting very hard to predict the actual value. But if we look at the correlation, then it was quite good. It was 87 and the log norm correlation was 87. So basically log norm correlation is after removing the 7.25 percentile of top and bottom part of that data set that for that KPI, the top and bottom highest and lowest values for that KPI. Uh, so it's, it was 87%. So that was quite good. And Crowdsourcing advantage, the huge advantage of using crowdsourcing in this project was the in-depth exploration of the initial ideas. Our members submitted different kind of models for this problem statement. 
including TensorFlow, Keras, CADGBoost, Lite GBM, LSTM, Random Forest Regressor, etc. And this helped us to identify a suitable model for this problem statement. So that was very good. Uh, the total number of submissions we got in our last challenge was 15. In the first day of challenge, it was seven. And in ideation challenge, we got nine submissions. Yeah, that's it. Any questions? No questions on the chat, Saurabh. So I think we can continue. Yeah, okay, thank you. Awesome. Thank you and uh, great job, uh, Justin, uh, sorry, GoStar and Srab. All right, let's keep going. So today we're gonna talk about uh, SpaceNet. This was run by Dan and uh, co-pilot was Walrus71. So SpaceNet, we have had a, uh, a long-term relationship with them. They are a startup helping to, uh, to provide mapping services. Um, why don't you take us away, Dan? Great, thanks, Rosh. Um, yeah, so uh, while I may be the one giving the presentation today, uh, all the credit for everyone watching really goes out to Walrus71, uh, as I know him, Balaj. Um, he has led uh, all six of the SpaceNet challenges since the beginning, which started in 2016. Um, so he's, uh, he's our guy on the ground and has been doing an absolutely outstanding job uh, on all of these projects. Um, so kind of piggybacking on what Ross just mentioned, um, the goal of SpaceNet as a whole is to take um, both data sets uh, and solution types that may not necessarily be um, uh, used by the open source community and get them out there uh, just to kind of see what these communities can do with these different types of data and really increase the uh, art of the possible here. Uh, and so where that comes through with SpaceNet 6 is uh, we were asking our contestants uh, to extract building footprints using a combination of two different data types, uh, which is synthetic aperture radar, uh, which goes by SAR, and your pretty traditional electro-optical uh, data sets as well. Um, the really interesting thing about this challenge is that this is the very first time that SAR data uh, has ever been used uh, in, in a crowdsourcing challenge. Um, it's the pretty cutting edge type of satellite imagery that it is coming out these days. Um, and it's very unique in the fact that it can penetrate all clouds, all weather conditions, and doesn't require any sort of lighting so it can happen day and night, um, which is very, very impactful uh, in the way it's able to be collected. Uh, you don't have to wait for prime weather to be able to do this. Uh, the cons here are, as you can see in this image, uh, this, is, this is a SAR image uh, of a city. Uh, SAR images are only in black and white, um, which becomes very difficult as typically the color spectrum is, is used very heavily uh, in our competitions to help identify different buildings and specifically to identify those building footprints. Uh, it's very easy to extract something that maybe has a, a yellow square versus a green uh, background versus everything that's just in different shades of gray. Um, so that was the real challenge in this is, is can we still achieve a level of accuracy in identifying these footprints uh, with a different type of data uh, that doesn't necessarily have some of the core components that make doing this type of work very easily. Um, additionally, where you're going to see like I, well, I think really speaking to the importance of this too for, for the public is um, SAR imagery, one of the reasons it's becoming so valuable is because it is, can be used very, very easily to aid disaster response. So if you think of a situation where a hurricane has devastated an area, in typical Im image analysis, you would have to wait for all of the weather that's causing devastation to pass for the weather conditions to be perfectly clear and then to fly your satellite over and get the new images uh, to then eventually run your analysis. Uh, SAR imagery has the potential to rapidly speed up that time um, with the ability to cut through clouds uh, and be collected at any time. Um, you could theoretically be capturing imagery next to real time uh, and running analysis on that. Um, so pairing all this together, uh, we exposed our community to SAR data, like I said, for the very first time and the Main goal is to be the current industry standard of a 21.75 provisional score. 
Uh, really didn't have any idea how this was going to go. But as you can see by all the stats on the left, uh, this challenge was a resounding success uh, and was actually the most successful challenge in the entire SpaceNet program. Uh, so we had tons of registrants, 417, uh, with an absolutely unbelievable submission volume uh, for, un for anyone who may not be, um, a, I guess, familiar with the marathon match format. Uh, contestants can submit multiple times. For this contest, uh, the maximum submission was three per day. Uh, so for, uh, for about six weeks, uh, it's still 1,600 submissions is, is unbelievably incredible. And then uh, additionally, remember we had that 21.75 score we were trying to beat. Uh, 52 of our competitors either met or exceeded that baseline, uh, which is really just unbelievable. Uh, and the leading provisional score at the end of the challenge was uh, more than double uh, what we expected. So an actual score of 46.51. Um, so this was a big, big success uh, and has really kind of got the gears in motion for SpaceNet 7, which is going to be a, another big push uh, in kind of a new area of data analysis. Um, and so big shout out to everyone in our community, anyone who sees this, who participated as well as Walter 71 Velaz. Uh, thank you so much for, for running this. Um, I think that's about all I have. If there are any questions on this particular project. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dan and, and, uh, and Velaz. Thanks. Next up in our final project is Arcelic QA. So, um, this was a, a pretty interesting quality assurance project in that the client was based in Turkey and they required native Turkish speakers. So pulling together a, a crowd or a pool of members who knew Turkish, that is something that Topcutter can do. And from time to time, we will get requests from our clients to either have uh, native speakers or um, folks proficient in reading or writing in a specific language. Um, so this was a pretty cool problem to work on. Today, Jay Kumar is gonna talk about it. His co-pilot was Natasha Thomas. Jay, take us away, please. Yeah, thank you, Rash. Arcelic uh, is a uh, home appliance manufacturer and uh, they sell the products online uh, in Turkish market. So as, Nas, uh, as Rash mentioned, uh, the key requirement for them is to conduct an exploratory testing, but some amount of uh, participation they expect from the uh, local Turkish people because this uh, website is uh, offering uh, the key features to the local market. So that was the challenge with uh, we approached uh, this uh, exploratory testing. And uh, the local Wipro team helped us to reach out uh, the testers in the local market, as well as the top coder community members from the local market. Our uh, uh, Glenn has helped to make them to register into that. So we have got overall 102 uh, registrations for this challenge, out of which 10% are uh, from Turkey. And our customer was so eager uh, right from the registration stage how many people registered and how they are uh, uh, like the defects are getting reported from the local people as well they were interested and uh, we have got uh, for this exploratory challenge uh, we have got uh, closer to 638 uh, defects whereas our target was to identify closer to uh, 200 that was the expectation with which uh, the customer uh, reached us this application is live in uh, production so the challenge that we had was it's an e-commerce portal. So the check-in functionality. So we told clearly our community members cannot uh, uh, pay and do this. Uh, they check out of the functionality. So until the payment function, uh, we can test it. And after which they have conducted, our uh, testers conducted the testing. And uh, so far, uh, like uh, this uh, testing was considered like one of the, the biggest success for them, uh, the customer because it has been completed in uh, four days uh, and uh, the defect review, uh, it was taken a couple of days and then uh, we have uh, closer to 340 defects we have uh, given to them. And the defects were like uh, categorized into various categories like uh, from uh, user interface defects to user experience, then security and functional issues. 
So all together, it took us uh, around uh, seven days to complete the challenge from end to end. Next slide. So this is the issues by category. The uh, since it's an uh, online portal, uh, the expectation from the customer is to use all uh, key uh, browsers, the leading browsers, Chrome, Firefox, IE 11, and Edge to test it. And also in terms of OS as well, both the Windows and Mac OS, they want to test. And uh, the defects were categorized into five uh, big areas functional UI, usability, content, and security. So we have got defects across all these functional areas and uh, the defects submitted, functional defects closer to 300 defects were submitted and uh, UI defects 218, those were the uh, major uh, categories of uh, defects identified. So the big advantage of uh, this uh, testing uh, is like 100 plus members joined within a couple of days and they performed the testing and the customer was very appreciative of the volume of uh, defects in a short turnaround that uh, we produced it. Next slide. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank thank you, Jay. I think that was a great overview. Um, what, I, what I always find interesting about our QA challenges are the number of defects that we find. And this application was not developed by TopGooder. We just tested it. So finding 300 functional defects is a phenomenal number. It's also an indicator that the code that was built was pretty shitty. So <laughs> we didn't do it, but we only tested it. So great job, Jay. Now, uh, open floor. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to, to speak up. Um, just a quick recap of, of the projects that we've gone over. We've gone over a web application developed for ABB using talent as a service slash gig work. We've talked about the Agnomi telehealth mobile apps for iOS and Android. Uh, we talked about the uh, algorithm that we developed uh, to perform predictive analytics for A1, the mapping that we've done for, for SpaceNet, and then the quality assurance testing for our select. So I'll pause there, open floor, any questions? Oh, and it also looks like we have a poll. Uh, it should have popped up for you. So out of the projects we discussed, which one do you think would have been the toughest to deliver? Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to vote, but I'm gonna vote anyways. Uh, I'm gonna say AVV Rise 2.0. Okay. Harshit, when do we get the results? Yeah, I'll just probably end it in the next, next 10, 15 seconds, and then we'll get the results. Very right, cool. This is so suspenseful. We need music <laughs> to accompany this. OK, yeah, well, I'll, I'll... put your hands together. Here are the results. <laughs> All right. 39% of you voted for ABV rise to point up, which I, th I think it's accurate. It was a tough project. We learned a lot on it. Okay. So I hope you all enjoyed finding out more about the projects. I just want to give a, a shout out to not only the project managers that were involved in, in running the work, but the awesome co-pilots who did all of the work all of the members who contributed to the challenges. These projects really do take a crowd and you were all involved. So thank you all. And I hope you all have an awesome day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Good.